Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the episode, this episode of the podcast called The Dictionary. Top of page 144. Let us do this. First word is borderline. Uh, Second form, adverb from 1925. Synonyms are almost and nearly, as in borderline tacky, also as in borderline suicidal. Uh, I hope none of you are borderline suicidal. Get on this side of that. Next is border terrier. Two words from 1894. Noun from 1894. Any of a breed of small terriers of British origin having a harsh, dense coat and close undercoat. Next is borger. B-O-R-D-U-R-E. This is a noun from the 14th century. A border on a heraldic shield. They call that the borger. Uh, Next is bore, B-O-R-E, first form, verb, from, before the 12th century. Uh, We are starting with transitive. One, to pierce with a turning or twisting movement of a tool. Two, to make, as a cylindrical hole, by boring or digging away material, as in, bored a tunnel. Uh, Intransitive is next, 1A, to make a hole by or as if by boring. 1B, to sink a mine shaft or well. 2, to make one's way steadily, especially against resistance, as in, we bored through the jostling crowd. Oh, I've had to do that so many times. Not fun. This is from Old English, Borion, akin to the Old High German, Boron, which means to bore, from the Latin, forare, which means to bore, from ferire, which means to strike. Now we have the second form of bore. It is a noun from the 14th century. 1A, a usually cylindrical hole made by or as if by boring. So we were boring before, and now we're making the bore. Or now the bore is the thing that, is, that was made by the boring. 1B, which is chiefly Australian and New Zealand, a borehole drilled especially to make an artesian well. 2A, the long, usually cylindrical hollow part of something as a tube or gun barrel. 2B, the inner surface of a hollow cylindrical object. 3, the size of a bore, as 3A, the interior diameter of a gun barrel, and especially British, they have the 1A2 definition for the word gauge, so both are good. Uh, And then we have 3B, the diameter of an engine cylinder. Now we have the third form of bore. It is the past tense of bear, B-E-A-R. Fourth form of bore, noun from 1601, a tidal flood with a high abrupt front. Fifth form of bore, noun from 1766, one that causes boredom as A, a tiresome person, B, something that is devoid of interest. The origin is unknown of that one. But here we have the sixth and final form of bore. It is a transitive verb from 1768, to cause to feel boredom. Some might say that this podcast is uh, a bore, but I don't think so. Next is boreal, B-O-R-E-A-L, adjective from the 15th century. One, of, relating to, or located in northern regions, as in boreal waters. That's why the aurora borealis is in the northern hemisphere, and the aurora, I think it's aurora australis, is in the southern hemisphere. Number two, of relating to or comprising the northern biotic area characterized especially by dominance of coniferous forests. Let's see, this is from uh, Latin boreas, which means north wind, or just north, uh, from the Greek boreas, which is our next word, boreas, with a capital B, noun, f- uh, no year, just, just that's, that's it. Uh, number one, the Greek god of the north wind, boreas. Number two, the north wind personified. Next is boredom. Noun from 1852, something that I have felt a lot, but I feel a little bit guilty about that. Uh, The state of being weary and restless through lack of interest. 
Next is Boreen. Bor, E E N. Noun from 1836. It is Irish um, and it means a narrow country lane. Oh, I've driven on those. I didn't know they were called Boreens, but they are something else. You got to be really, really careful when you drive on those Boreens. This is um, Irish Bothrin, which is a diminutive of Bothar, which means road. Next is Borehole. B-O-R-E-H-O-L-E, one word, noun from 1708. A hole bored or drilled in the earth as A, an exploratory well. B is chiefly British, a small diameter well drilled especially to obtain water. Next is borer, B-O-R-E-R, noun. Why am I making myself yawn? It is later in the day. I should go to bed. Uh, it is a noun from the 14th century. 1. A tool used for boring. 2A. Synonym is ship worm. One word, S H I P W O R M. Like a ship, a ship with sails, and then there's a bunch of worms on it. 2B. An insect that bores in the woody parts of plants. Next is borescope. Uh, noun from 1941. An optical device, as a prism or optical fiber, used to inspect an inaccessible space, as an engine cylinder, a borescope. Next is boric acid, two words, noun, from 1869. Seriously, I keep on yawning. A white crystalline acid, B, OH, which is in parentheses, and then three. So we've got three OHs, and then that's next to a B. Uh, which is obtained from its salts and used especially as a weak antiseptic and fire retardant. Next is Borid, a noun from 1863. Maybe my podcast is boring. Um, This is a binary compound of boron with a more electropositive element or radical. And our last word is very extremely appropriate. It is the word boring. B-O-R-I-N-G, adjective from 1785, causing boredom. Synonym is tiresome, as in a boring lecture. I think we've all had some of those. Boringly is an adverb, and boringness is a noun. So we had borderline, border terrier, borger, bore, 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 boreal, boreas, boredom, Boreen, borehole, borer, borescope, boric acid, boride, and boring. Well, I think it is only appropriate that I pick boring as the word of the episode. Thank you very much. This was the top of page 144. I'm going to try and record one more. Hopefully, I don't yawn too much through it. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Thank you and goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to this soothing episode of The Dictionary. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to speak like this the whole time. Uh, But in the last episode, I was yawning a lot. And I think every time I looked down, uh, which I was doing most of the time, I don't know, it just made me yawn. So let's try and not make that happen this time. The first word is born, B-O-R-N, adjective from uh, uh, before the 12th century. 1A, brought forth by or as if by birth. 1B, Synonym is native, uh, usually used in combination, as in American-born. 1C, deriving or resulting from, usually used in combination, again, as in poverty-born crime. 2A, having from birth specified qualities, as in a born leader. 2B, being in specified circumstances from birth, as in nobly born. Also as in, born to wealth. Three, destined from or as if from birth. As in, born to succeed. Uh, This is from uh, Old English, boren or baron, which means to carry. And there's more at the word bear. Next is born again. Two words with a hyphen. Adjective from 1861. Sorry, I had some gas. That came out like a burp. One, of relating to or being a usually Christian person 
who has made a renewed or confirmed commitment of faith, especially after an intense religious experience. Number two, having returned to or newly adopted an activity, a conviction, or a persona, especially with a proselytizing zeal. How do you say that word? Proselytizing. I thought there was a TH in there, proselytize, but maybe not. Um, as in, a born-again conservative. This is from the verse in the Bible that says, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. From some letters and numbers. All right, now we have the word born, but this one has an E at the end. It is the first form, past participle of the word bear, B-E-A-R. Second form of born, adjective from circa 1559, transported or transmitted by, and that is used in combination as in soil born or airborne. Next is borneol or borneol. B-O-R-N-E-O-L, noun, from 1876, a crystalline cyclic alcohol, C10, H17, O, H, that occurs in two enantiomeric, what? Enan, enantiomeric, it goes over to the second line. Why is it that the hardest words go over two lines? Enantiomeric forms is found in essential oils and is used especially in perfumery. This is from the uh, the island of Indonesia called Borneo. Uh, next is Bornite. Noun from uh, circa 1847. A brittle, metallic-looking mineral that consists of a sulfide of copper... Consists of a... Yes, I read that correctly. That consists of a sulfide of copper and iron, and is a valuable copper ore. This is from a German... Let's see. Uh, Okay, yes. It is from Ignaz von Born, uh, who died in... Whoa, 179? Not... Oh, oh boy, I misread that. Who died in 1791 was an Austrian mineralogist. Uh, And so... They took his name and they made Bornit, B-O-R-N-I-T, and then we changed it with an E at the end, Bornite. Uh, I thought that the one in 1791 was a right bracket, but it is not. All right, next is Boro, B-O-R-O. It is a prefix, which means boron, as in borosilicate. Next is borohydride, noun from 1940. The anion BH4 of boron, oh, and it looks like there's a minus sign next to the 4, but superscript. I don't know what that means. So the anion of boron and hydrogen that is used especially as a reducing agent and as a source of hydrogen atoms. Also, any of various compounds, as of metals, containing the borohydride anion. I don't know what an anion is, but I'm sure I read it before. Next is boron, uh, noun from 1812, a trivalent metalloid element found in nature only in combination and used especially in glass and detergents. And then it says, see the element table, boronic is an adjective. You just switch the B with an M and you have something completely different. Moron, moronic. Next is boron carbide. Noun from circa 1909, a refractory shiny black crystalline compound, B4C, that is one of the hardest known materials and is used especially in abrasives and as a structural reinforcing material. Next is borosilicate or borosilicate. It is a noun from 1817. One a silicate containing boron in the anion and occurring naturally. Number two, synonym is borosilicate glass, which is our next word, noun from 1933. A silicate glass that is composed of at least 5% oxide of boron and is used especially in heat-resistant glassware. Next is burrow. Uh, This is the one that I mentioned a couple episodes ago. B-O-R-O-W-N, 
O U G H noun from before the 12th century. 1A, a medieval fortified group of houses forming a town with special duties and privileges. 1B, a town or urban constituency in Great Britain that sends a member to Parliament. 1C, an urban area in Great Britain incorporated for purposes of self-government. 2A, a municipal corporation proper in some states, as New Jersey and Minnesota, corresponding to the incorporated town or village of the other states. 2B, one of the five constituent political divisions of New York City. Uh, maybe I can find out what those five are. And number three, a civil division of the state of Alaska corresponding to a county in most other states. This is from Middle English, Berg. Ah, so it's related. You know, you, you'll see um, the Berg at the end of a town or at the end of a, a name of a town. Uh, and, you know, that's, that means a little, a little town, a Berg. Uh, so, for Middle English Burg of Old English Burg, which means a fortified town, akin to the Old High German Burg, which means fortified place, and probably f to Old English Bjorg, which means hill, and there's more at the word barrow. Next is Burrow English. So, yeah, it's just English uh, after Burrow. Noun from the 14th century, a custom formerly existing in parts of England by which the lands of an interstate descended to the youngest son. Uh, okay, interstate, what is this word? It looks like interstate, but they took out the R. A custom formerly existing in parts of England by which the lands of an interstate descended to the youngest son. All right, borough English. And last word is borough hall. Borough, B-O-R-O, O, no, B-O-R-O-U-G-H, and then the word hall. Noun from 1938, a chief administrative building of a borough. And, uh, uh, yeah, that's all of them. So we had born, born again, born, borneol, bornite, boro, borohydride, boron, boron carbide, borosilicate, borosilicate glass, borough, borough English, borough hall. I'm going to pick borough as the word of the episode. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. Uh, we are um, at the end of August. We're almost at the very end of August. Uh, not when I'm recording this. I'm in not even the, really the middle of August yet. But, you know, I like to live in the future. Um, or the past, depending on how you look at it. All right, this has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Thank you and goodbye. Hello, Word Nerds. Welcome to the Dictionary. Um, yeah, I think, I think we just get going. Let's just do it. Okay. The first word is borrow, uh, bo or borrow, I guess you could say. B-O-R-R-O-W, verb from before the 12th century. Uh, we are starting with transitive, 1A, to receive with the implied or expressed intention of returning the same or an equivalent, as in borrow a book. Also is in borrowed a dollar. I have borrowed some things from people that I still have like over a decade later, uh, like some movies. Maybe I should return them. I had the intention. Uh, I had implied or it had the I had expressed intention of returning the same or the equivalent, uh, but you know, it just never happened. Sorry about that. 1B, to borrow money, that's in parentheses, with the intention of returning the same plus interest. So that is a whole other thing. That's usually uh, when you borrow money from a bank, they're not going to just let you take that money and bring it back at the same. You, they charge interest. That's how they make money. Um, all right, number 2A, to appropriate for one's own use, as in borrow a metaphor. Comedians borrow stuff all the time, don't they? 2B, synonyms are derive and adopt. Number three, to take from a digit of the minuend in arithmetical subtraction in order to add as 10 to the digit holding the next lower place. Wow. Um, by the way, after um, right at the beginning, it says to take, and then there's the word uh, one in parentheses, O-N-E. 
to take one, that's it. you could be taking one or something else. Anyway, that's an example. I just made this way more complicated than it already is, which is super complicated. But, um, you know, I, I think you got it. Number four, to adopt into one language from another. Number five is a dialect version, dialect word. Uh, the synonym is lend. And then we have one intransitive definition, to borrow something. Borrower is a noun. Oh, we have a phrase, borrow trouble. That means to do something unnecessarily that may result in adverse reaction or repercussions. Repercussions. It's like you can be a percussionist, you're a percussion player, but you're doing it again. Repercussion? I don't know. Um, let's see. Let's look at the etymology. Uh, Middle English, Barwin, from Old English, Borgian, akin to the Old English, Bjorgen, which means to preserve. And there's more at the word bury, like you're burying a body. Um, all right. Now we have borrowed time, two words, noun from 1664. An uncertain and usually uncontrolled postponement of something inevitable. And this is used with the phrase living on, like living on borrowed time. There was that movie uh, with um, that guy where everybody lived until they were 30 and then they had like time ingrained in their arm. They showed a clock and you could like use that as currency. And uh, and then once your time runs out, you die. Everybody, nobody ages past like 30 or something. Um, so yeah, they that's uh, borrowed time was definitely a theme with that one. Um, let's see. Now we have the word borrowing noun from 1609. Something borrowed especially a word or phrase adopted from one language into another. Next is borrow pit, two words, noun from 1863, an excavated area where material has been dug for use as fill at another location. I'm just going to borrow from this pit and put it over in this pit, and let's borrow some from that pit and put it in that pit. Uh, okay, next we have Bors, capital B. O-R-Z, noun from the 15th century, a knight of the round table and nephew of Lancelot. Uh, yeah, I don't know the knights of the round table other than maybe Lancelot. I'm sure there's a couple more that sound familiar, but uh, yeah, I haven't heard of boars before. Okay, now we have borscht. B-O-R-S-C-H-T. There are one, two, three, five, uh, five consonants in a row. Uh, you could also spell it without a T. This is a noun from 1808. A soup made primarily of beets and served hot or cold, often with sour cream. This is a Yiddish word um, and Ukrainian and Russian. Uh, they just spell it a little differently. I recently watched that new movie called Ameri An American Pickle with Seth Rogen playing two roles. It's on HBO uh, or HBO Max. Actually, it's only on HBO Max. And um, I really liked it. It's super silly and goofy. Um, the concept obviously is totally ridiculous, but uh, you know, I think there's a lot of heart and reality in it as well. Um, you know, what would these characters do in this completely bonkers situation? Uh, I enjoyed it, and he did a great job. And the logistics of making that movie had to have been insane. Anyway, moving on to Borscht Belt. Uh, two words, noun from 1936. And we have the synonym borscht circuit, which is next. It is a noun, um, often capitalized, the B and the C. Uh, this is from 1936. The theaters and nightclubs associated, uh, yes, the theaters and nightclubs associated with the Jewish summer resorts in the Catskills. Go watch that show, uh, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. They, uh, I think it's like the second or third season they go up to like the Catskills or something similar. So I guess that's the Borscht Circuit. Um, this is from the popularity of Borscht on menus of the resorts. Because, as we read in the previous one, it is a soup made primarily of beets and served hot or cold, often with sour cream, and is a Yiddish, Ukrainian, and Russian word. Moving on to Borstal, capital B-O-R-S-T-A-L. This is a noun from 1907. It is British, 
and the synonym is reformatory. So this is from Borstal, England, which is a village where the first such institution was set up, uh, a reformatory, whatever that is. Maybe that's where they send people to go get reformed in some way. Next is Bort, B-O-R-T. You could also spell it B-O-A-R-T. It is a noun from 1622. Imperfectly crystallized diamond or diamond fragments used as an abrasive. That would really hurt. But that's called Bort. Next is, I mean, unless it's like super fine, maybe that's what they use to like file down your nails or something. All right, next we have Borzoi. B-O-R-Z-O-I, noun from 1887. Any of a breed of large dogs developed in Russia, especially for pursuing wolves, which are very large, that have a long, silky, usually white coat with darker markings, called also Russian wolfhound. So yeah, let's find a picture of uh, this Russian wolfhound, or also called borzoi. Uh, Borzoi is a Russian word, uh, which means swift. So they must be pretty fast to try and catch wolves. But man, yeah, wolves are crazy. Next is Bosk, capital B-O-S-C, noun from 1850. A pear, like the pear that you eat, a pear with firm flesh and brown or dark yellow skin. I call it a Bosk. Uh, let's see, this is short for Boer Bosk, which is from French Boer. Uh, which is any of various soft flesh pear varieties, plus bosque, which is perhaps from, what is L-A-G? Is that like three different things? Or is it its own thing? Uh, Yeah, it's probably Latin. And uh, that is all I can really tell from that. Anyway, so so that is from L and A and G, which is uh, Bosque Diantic. That's a person, I guess, who died in 1828, was a French naturalist. I'm still not sure what L-A-G is. But anyway, that's where Bosque the pear comes from. Next we have Boscage, B-O-S-C-A-G-E, could also be K-A-G-E. And uh, for those of you who want some more behind-the-scenes information, what I think is kind of interesting is the way the syllables are broken up between those two uh, spellings are different. In the first one, the syllable break is between the S and the C, but in the second one, with the K, the syllable break is between the K and the A. Why why did that have to happen? Um, All right, this is a noun from the 14th century. A growth of trees or shrubs. Uh, And the synonym is thicket. Bring me a shrubbery! This is Middle English boscage, boscage from Anglo-French bosquage from, uh, well, I think maybe it's bois, B-O-I-S, which means forest of Germanic origin akin to the old high German busk, which means forest um, or, or bush. So we get bush from the word busk or busk, which is old high German. All right, next we have bosch. It is a noun from 1834. Foolish talk or activity. Synonym is nonsense, and it is often used interjectionally. Um, I actually had to redo this part because I thought that Gwyneth Paltrow's company name was Bosch, but um, it, it, it's actually Goop, which doesn't... It, that sounds like the one that would have spoofed her company's name, but no, I guess that's the real name of it. Um, so anyway, I went down a little, a little rabbit hole on that, but... Um, if it was the real name of her company, I thought that was pretty ridiculous because it's foolish talk or activity and nonsense. Um, that is just what happened in my brain. So this is a Turkish word, uh, bos, B-O-S, which means empty. Next we have bosk, spelled B-O-S-K or B-O-S-Q-U-E. It is a noun from 1814, a small wooded area. And it is probably a back formation from the word bosky, which is our next and last word, B-O-S-K-Y. It is an adjective from 1593. One, having abundant trees or shrubs. And number two, of or relating to a woods. Uh, All right, so we had borrow, borrowed time, borrowing, borrow pit, bores, borscht, 
Borscht Belt, Borscht Circuit, Borstal, Bort, Borzoi, Bosk, Boskage, Bosch, Bosk, and Boski. Uh, let's see. Uh, some of these I have to remind myself. Let's see. Bort, Borz, bo, bo, bo. I think I'm going to pick, um, well, let's pick Bosch as the word of the episode because, you know, it, it's not necessarily a great thing unless you're you're going for that. It's foolish talk or activity. It's nonsense. Um, so it's just like whatever. It's you know that's what this this podcast is. It's just bosh. Thank you very much for listening. Um, I think that's all I got to say today. This has been Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. We are on the last quarter of uh, page one forty four, starting with bosom. B-O-S-O-M. It is the first form, noun, from before the 12th century. 1A. The human chest and especially the front part of the chest, as in hugged the child to his bosom. 1B. A woman's breasts regarded especially at a as a single, single feature, as in a woman with an ample bosom. Also the synonym breast. Now we have 2A. The chest conceived of as the seat of the emotions and intimate feelings, as in a story you will take your a story you will take to your bosom. I missed a word in there. A story you will take to your bosom. Like you will you will take it to heart. It's so filled with emotions. Now we have to be the security and intimacy of or like that of being hugged to someone's bosom, as in the bosom of her family. Number three, the part of a garment that covers the chest or the breasts. And let's see, I think we can skip the etymology. We are going to move on to the second form of bosom. It is a transitive verb from 1587. One, synonym is embrace. Two, to enclose or carry in the bosom. Th- th- that word doesn't isn't spelled like how, how I feel it should be spelled, but... Whatever. B-O-S-O-M. I don't know. Now we have the third form of bosom. It is an adjective from 1590. Synonyms are close and intimate, as in bosom friends. There was a TV show that I did not watch because I think I was a little bit too young, um, but it was uh, called Bosom Buddies, and it starred Tom Hanks and the other guy who many people have probably forgotten about. But, you know, he's probably done some other things. But I think it was Tom Hanks... It was the thing that, like, made him break out into stardom, from what I remember hearing. Now we have bosomed, with an E-D, adjective from 1603. Having a bosom of a specified kind, used in combination, as in full bosomed. Speaking of Tom Hanks, my wife and I recently watched his very first role, which is called He Knows You're Alone. It's a horror movie i put horror in quotes because it's not terribly scary um but uh it was his first role and he doesn't show up until like the last little bit of the movie all right next we have bosomy it is an adjective from 1860 one swelling upward or outward as in bosomy hills i think we can figure out where that one came from and number two having prominent breasts Next, we have boson, or boson, B-O-S-O-N. It is a noun from 1947. A particle as a photon or meson whose spin is zero or an integral number. And then compare to the word fermion, F-E-R-M-I-O-N. Bosonic is an adjective. This is from somebody's name who I will probably not pronounced correctly, so apologies, Satyandranath Bose. Bose is the last name, B-O-S-E, and he or she was a an Indian physicist um, who died in 1974, and then, oh, I see, it is, uh, so it's that, that's where they got it from, Bose, plus the, well, I don't even know what that is, I'm not even going to try and describe that. Anyway, that's what that's from. Next, we have Bosquet, B-O-S-Q-U-E-T, noun from circa 1737. We have the synonym thicket. So this is French from Italian, boschetto, 
which is a diminutive of Bosco, which means forest, of Germanic origin akin to the Old High German, Busk, which means forest or bush, which we learned in the last episode. Next is the word boss, or also it could be pronounced bas, B-O-S-S. That probably depends on where you're from. This is the first form. It is a noun from the 14th century, 1A, a protuberant part of or body, a protuberant part or body, as in a boss of granite or a boss of granite. Also as in a boss on an animal's horn, 1B. A raised ornamentation. Synonym is stud. Uh, 1C. An ornamental projecting block used in architecture. And there is a picture of this. Um, it's, let's see, there's a circle uh, with a, a, a sort of leaf um, or sort of an ornamental leaf inside of it. And the circle is actually made up of other leaves and stems that go around it. And then from the center come four pieces um, that sort of look like um, molding that you would see like in the, you know, where the, the, the wall and the ceiling meet. Um, so yeah, it's this ornamental thing. And then they can use that. I think they make a mold of it and then they can, you know, use the same mold for making a bunch of them. All right, now we have number two, a soft pad used in ceramics and glass making. Number three, the hub of a propeller. Next, we have the second form of boss. It is a transitive verb from the 15th century. One, to ornament with bosses, the stuff from what we just read about. And then this is where we get this word, or it's related. The synonym is emboss, E-M-B-O-S-S. Number two, to treat as the surface of porcelain with a boss. So to treat with a boss, and then often it would be the surface of porcelain. Now we have the third form of boss. It is a noun from 1653. One, a person who exercises control or authority, specifically one who directs or supervises workers. Number two, a politician who controls votes in a party organization or dictates appointments or legislative measures. Bostom is a noun. Bossism is also a noun. So what is a bossism? The thing, the things that your boss says that are very smart and interesting? I don't know. Uh, this is from Dutch boss, B-A-A-S, which means master. So yeah. Now we have the fourth form of boss. It is an adjective from 1836. It is slang, and it means excellent or first rate. Yeah, this podcast is boss. You can go leave a review that says that. Uh, let's see. Now we have the fifth form of boss. It is a transitive verb from 1856. One, to act as boss of. Number two, to give usually arbitrary orders to, and that is usually used with the word around. I'm going to boss around because I am feeling bossy. Now we have the sixth and final form of boss. It is a noun from 1790. Synonyms are cow and calf. Uh, so this is an English dialect. It means young cow. Uh, okay. Now we have bossa nova. Two words, noun from 1962. One, popular music of Brazilian origin that is rhythmically related to the samba, but with complex harmonies and improvised jazz-like passages. And number two, a dance performed to bossa nova music. I think we all had those little keyboards when we were kids, and there were some pre-installed uh, rhythms that you could play along with, which I was terrible at. But one of them, of course, I remember the bossa nova. It was very fast and fun. This is a Patagonian word? No, that's probably Portuguese. I always see PG and I think Patagonian for some reason. But I'm pretty sure it is uh, Portuguese. Where is it? PG. PG. Why isn't it in here? P? P? A? P? 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 There it is. Portuguese. Okay. Um... So now we are moving away from Bossa Nova and we have Bossman. 
two words noun from 1909 and we have the uh, the synonym which is the number three or the third uh, form of boss which we read next is bossy first form adjective from 1543 one marked by a swelling or roundness number two marked by bosses and those would be the bosses from the first form uh and then uh, uh oh and then a synonym is studded s-t-u-d-d-e-d second form of bossy noun from 1843 synonyms are cow and calf and uh let's see this is from the sixth form of boss good for that now we have the third form of bossy Adjective from 1882. Inclined to domineer. Synonym is dictatorial, like like a dictator. Bossiness is a noun. Yes, dictators are extremely bossy. Now we have Boston. It's a city, but that's not what this is going to be, I don't think. Let's see. It is a noun from 1800. One, a variation of, of whist? W-H-I-S-T. A variation of whist played with two decks of cards. I don't know this game. I have to learn what whist is. Um, And then number two, a dance somewhat like a waltz. Uh, It's whist and a waltz. Uh, And this is from Boston, Massachusetts. That's where they get it from, the name from. Next, we have Boston Cream Pie, noun from 1908. A round cake that is split and filled with a custard or cream filling and usually frosted with chocolate. Yum. Next is Boston Fern, noun from circa 1900. A luxuriant fern, often with drooping, much divided fronds. And the scientific name is going to be fun. Nephrolepis exaltata bostoniensis. That wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. And then our last word for this episode is Boston Ivy. Two words. uh, Noun from circa 1900. A lot of stuff related to Boston happened in the early 1900s. It is a woody Asian vine of the grape family, typically having three-lobed leaves. And the scientific name is Parthonokissus tricuspidata. That was fun. So we had bosom, bosomed, bosomy, Boson, Bosket, Boss, 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 Bossa Nova, Boss Man, Bossy, Boston, Boston Cream Pie, Boston Fern, Boston Ivy. I am going to pick Boson as the word of the episode because it's science related and I've heard of it, but I don't really know what it is. But I know that its spin is zero or an integral number. So there's that. Uh, and yeah, that was that was a good time. We had fun today. So this has been Spencer reading the dictionary to you and dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. We are at the top of page 145 for this extremely um, something episode of the dictionary. Today is August 31st. It is the last day of August. This year is somehow both flying by but also dragging terribly, right? Does it feel like that? I don't know. Okay, this is just the weirdest year ever. Um, the first word is Boston lettuce. Two words. Noun from 1880. Butter lettuce of a variety that is larger than the closely related bib lettuce. Next is Boston marriage. They've got their own kind of marriage. Noun from 1980. A long-term loving relationship between two women. They call that a Boston marriage? That cannot be that cannot be uh, used nicely, right? I don't know. Maybe at the time it was like, that's just what they said, but that seems like a derogatory phrase these days. I might have to look into that. Um, all right, now we have Boston rocker, noun from 1843. A wooden rocking chair with a high spindle back a decorative top panel, and a seat and arms that curve down at the front. They they probably made it in Boston, and that's why it's called Boston Rocker. Next, we have Boston Terrier, noun from 1894. 
any of a breed of small, smooth-coated terriers originating as a cross of the bulldog and bull terrier and being uh, brindled or black with white markings, called also Boston Bull. All right. Next is Boson. I think that's how it's pronounced. B-O-S-U-N. Um, we had this before because there are other spellings. B-O-S apostrophe N, B-O apostrophe S apostrophe N, or B-O apostrophe S U N. You could pretty much just put an apostrophe in there and you're fine. Um, it is a variation of Boatswain. Next is Boswell, capital B-O-S-W-E-L-L, noun from 1858, a person who records in detail the life of a usually famous contemporary. Boswellian is an adjective, and Boswellize is a verb. So, um, so, so what is this person? Do they follow people around and basically write their biography? Uh, do they do it secretly? How does this work? What What is going on? But I can tell you that this is from James Boswell, who I guess probably did that, record, uh, recorded the details of life of somebody famous who is a contemporary, I guess, maybe. Okay, next is bot. B-O-T could also be two Ts. It is the first form, noun from the 15th century. The larva of a bot fly especially one infesting the horse. This is Middle English akin to the Dutch leverbot, L-E-V-E-R-B-O-T, which means liver fluke, whatever that is. Maybe that's a kind of a bot fly. Uh, Now we have bot again, second form, abbreviation for one, botanical, botanist, botany. Number two, Bottle, number three, bottom, four, bought, like I bought some stuff with some money, and then five, robot. Now we have bota, B-O-T-A, noun from 1832, a leather bottle as for wine. This is Spanish from, I think that's Latin, butis, which means cask, which is, you know, what you put wine in. Next, we have botan, B-O-T-A-N. It is an abbreviation for botanical. Next is botanica, not botanical, botanica. It is a noun from 1969, a shop that deals in herbs and charms used especially by adherents of Santeria. So this is an American Spanish word, botanica, from the feminine of the Spanish word botanico, which means botanical, which is our next word. It is the first form adjective from 1658. One, of or relating to plants or botany. Two, derived from plants. Three, synonym is species, as in botanical tulips. Botanically is an adverb. And uh, let's see, this is from French, botanique. From Greek, botanikos, of, which means of herbs, which is from botani, which means pasture or herb. From boskin, which means to feed or graze, probably akin to the Lithuanian word guotas, which it does not look related to this at all, but I guess it is. And guotas means flock, like a flock of sheep. Now we have the second form of botanical It is a noun from circa 1926, a plant part or extract used especially in skin and hair care products. Also, a medicinal preparation derived from a plant. Now we have botanical garden, two words, noun from 1775, a garden often with greenhouses for the culture, study, and exhibition of special plants, called also botanic garden um but botanic is uh it has the little dots to designate where the syllables are why would they spell it out that way that's so interesting okay now we have botanize with an i s e at the end this is the british variation of botanize with a z instead of an s 
And wouldn't you know it, well, that's our next word. So let's read that one. This is a verb from 1751. We are starting with intransitive. To collect plants for a botanical investigation. Also, to study plants, especially on a field trip. We are going botanizing. And now we have transitive. To explore for botanical purposes. Botanizer is a noun. And now we have the word botany. Noun from 1696. One, a branch of biology dealing with plant life. 2A, plant life. That's it, just just plant life. 2B, the properties and life phenomena exhibited by a plant, plant type, or plant group. And number three, a botanical treatise or study, especially a particular system of botany. Botanist is a noun. And let's see, this is from, uh, yeah, we can skip that. Next, we have botch, B-O-T-C-H. It is the first form, noun, from the 14th century, an inflammatory sore. An inflammatory sore, yep. I got a botch on my arm. It's a sore, and it's inflamed. Now we have the second form of botch. It is a transitive verb from 1530. One, to foul up hopelessly, often used with the word up, like botch up. I really botched up that definition, which I could say often. Number two, to put together in a makeshift way. Botcher is a noun. Now we have the third form of botch. It is a noun from 1605. One, something that is botched. Synonym is mess. Number two, synonyms are patchwork and hodgepodge. Bocce is an adjective. And then finally, we have the word botfly, B-O-T-F-L-Y. Earlier in this episode, we had bot, which is the larva of the botfly. So it all comes full circle. This is a noun from 1819. Any of various stout dipteron flies uh, with larvae, parasitic in cavities or tissues of various mammals, ew, including humans. So they like to put their larva in our ears and noses and things. Uh, The family name is Oestridae, O-E-S-T-R-I-D-A-E. So we had Boston Lettuce, Boston Marriage, Boston Rocker, Boston Terrier, Boson, Boswell, Bot, Bota, Botan, Botanica, Botanical, Botanical Garden, Botanize, Botany, Botch, and Botfly. I am going to pick Boswell as the word of the episode uh, because it's um, recording the details of somebody's life, which I think is just kind of an interesting concept. And uh, yeah, that's it. All right. Happy August. Uh, I hope you had a happy August. Happy September, which is tomorrow. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Happy September. It is September 1st. Schools, I'm sure all of them are in session. Virtually, hopefully, please don't go into large groups of persons, peoples. Um, I'm recording this um, on, oh, it's August 16th. Today's my dad's 70th birthday. Um, I know um, in the episode today, I forgot to say that it was his birthday, I think. I think I mentioned it in, I, in tomorrow's episode. Um, but anyway, oh, so the whole point was I'm recording this in the middle of August. This is like two or three weeks from now. Uh, schools are already in session, some of them, and there are already many cases. And, um, what's going on people? Why are you sending people to school? This is ridiculous. I know virtual is not as good, but come on. I think getting sick and dying is worse, right? Okay. The first form, no, the first word is the first form of both. B-O-T-H. It is a pronoun? I think that's what it's saying. It's a pronoun from the 12th century. The one as well as the other. The one as well as the other. As in, both of us. Uh, Okay, now we have the second form of both. It is a conjunction from the 12th century. It is used as a function word to indicate and stress the inclusion of of each of two or more things 
specified by coordinated words, phrases, or clauses, as in prized both for its beauty and for its utility. Also as in he who loveth well both man and bird and beast. And that is a quote from S.T. Coleridge. Uh, okay, yeah, cool. Um, I, when I think of the word both, I don't usually think of more than two. I think of just, just two things or people or whatevers. Um, now we have the third form of both. It is an adjective from the 13th century. Being the two, affecting or involving the one and the other, as in both feet or both his eyes, or both these armies. Okay, interesting examples. Now we have the word bother. So this is why people hate English, because the, fir- the, uh, the words I just read are pronounced both, and then we add an ER, and it becomes bother. Not bother, bother. Why? This is a verb from 1728, one uh, oh, transitive is first. One, to annoy, especially by petty provocation. Little brothers and sisters like to bother. Uh, and then a synonym for that one is irk, I-R-K. Number two, to intrude upon. Synonym is pester. Three, to cause to be somewhat anxious or concerned, as in my stomach is bothering me. Often used interjectionally. And now we have the intransitive definitions. One, to become concerned, as in wouldn't bother with details. Two, to take pains, take the trouble, as in never bothered to ask. Well, why not? You could have learned something. Something. Uh, And now we have the synonym. It is the word annoy. This, oh, the origin is unknown. Nobody knows where the word bother came from. Here we go with the second form of bother. It is a noun from 1788, 1A, a state of petty discomfort, annoyance, or worry. Uh, 1B, something that causes petty annoyance or worry. And number two, synonym is fuss, F-U-S-S. Next is botheration, noun from 1797, 1, the act of bothering, the state of being bothered. Number two, Something that bothers, often used interjectionally. Now we have bothersome, adjective from 1834, causing bother. Synonym is vexing. Next is bothy, or it could be pronounced bothy, B-O-T-H-Y, noun from 1771. It is chiefly Scottish, and it means hut. That's the, uh, the synonym, hut. This is Scottish, probably from the obsolete Scottish word both, B-O-T-H, which means booth. Booth, hut, you get it? Okay, moving on to botane, botane, I think that's how it's pronounced, B-O-T-O-N-E-E. There is an accent over the second to last E. And, oh, you could also double up the N if you so choose. Botany. This is an adjective from the 15th century. It is of a heraldic cross. Having a cluster of three balls or knobs at the end of each arm. And it says to see the cross illustration. So, uh, you know, don't don't go looking ahead. Don't go Googling this thing if you want to see what it looks like. You're going to have to wait about a year uh, until we can talk about the cross illustration. I will describe it in so much detail. You will be shocked. All right, next we have Botox, capital B-O-T-O-X. It is a trademark used for a preparation of botulinum or botulinum toxin, uh, which is, yeah, from uh, the botul- botulism. That's where it's, it's related. It's related. I don't know what I'm saying. Next is bow tree, two words. It's a tree that's called bow, B-O. Noun from 1860. Synonym is pipple or pipal, something like that. P I P A L. Uh, but what is more interesting is the etymology. This is a Sinhalese word, bo, uh, which is from Sanskrit, bodhi, B O D H I, uh, which means enlightenment, which is from Buddha receiving enlightenment under this tree. 
and there's more at the word bid. I think we've mentioned this before. So Buddha sat under the bow tree, and he got enlightenment, and uh, that's why they named it that, the tree that? What was it named before that? Did that kind of tree have a name? Was it Fred? I don't know. All right, next we have Botryoidal. Botryoidal. B-O-T-R-Y-O-I-D-A-L. Adjective. From. 1816. Having the form of a bunch of grapes. As in, Botryoidal garnets. This is a Greek word. Botryoides from batris which means bunch of grapes i think it's so funny that there's a word that just is just means it has the shape of a bunch of grapes uh what was that word about the rumbling in your tummy barber borborygmus or barborygmus i think i i actually that one stuck that one stuck all right next we have botrytis it is a noun from 1863 any of a genus of imperfect fungi having botryoidal conidii or conidia and including several serious plant pathogens. Uh, So this is something that is in a botryoidal shape. It is, uh, oh, the genus name is botryitis. It's the same as the word itself, I think. Yeah. All right, next we have the word, something much easier to say, bottle. Noun from the 14th century. It is the first form. 1A, a rigid or semi-rigid container, typically of glass or plastic, having a comparatively narrower neck or narrow neck or mouth, and usually no handle. 1B, a usually bottle-shaped container made of skin for storing a liquid. 2, the quantity held by a bottle. 3A, intoxicating drink. The practice of drinking, uh, as in slipped deeper and deeper into the bottle. That is a quote from Anne Bernays. 3b, liquid food, as milk, used in place of mother's milk. And then number four is British slang. The synonyms are metal, M-E-T-T-L-E, and courage. And uh, that's probably because when you drink and you get drunk or buzzed, you tend to have a bit more courage than you would normally. So that's where that comes from, I think. And then bottleful is a noun. Um, All right. Next, we have the second form of bottle. It is a verb from 1594, and I think it is just transitive. 1A, to confine as if in a bottle. Synonym is restrain, used, usually used with the word up, as in bottling up their anger. You don't want to bottle up your anger or your feelings. 1B, to put or keep in a position or situation that makes free activity, progress, or escape difficult or impossible, used usually with the word up again, as in bottle up legislation in committee. Number two. To put into, or as if into, a bottle. As in, wished we could bottle their energy. Bottler is a noun. Next is bottle blonde. Two words, noun, from 1963. A person whose hair has been bleached blonde. Because their their blonde color came from a bottle of some kind. And then lastly, we have bottle brush. It is one word. This is great that it's the last word because my neck hurts. This is a noun from circa 1841. Any of a genus of Australian trees and shrubs of the myrtle family, widely cultivated in warm regions, especially for their spikes of brightly colored flowers. And the name comes from the shape of the flowers. So we had both bother, botheration, bothersome, bothy or bothy, Botanae, Botox, Botry, Botryoidal, Botryitis, Bot... No, it's just Botrytis. Bottle, Bottle Blonde, Bottle Brush. I am going to pick Botryoidal as the word of the episode. It is spelled again, B-O-T-R-Y-O-I-D-A-L. Thank you, thank you, thank you for listening. 
please go rate and review. Uh, that will definitely help me get up in the charts, which I am not in at all, but that's cool. No problem. Oh, I should probably mention, um, I don't really have a whole lot of detail, but I will get some by the time this episode airs. Um, I am part of a small sort of network of podcasts that are um, independent and relatively well produced. I would like to think, you know, this sound quality is decent. I'm not recording this on my phone or anything. Um, but also just unique and interesting ideas, which also I would like to think that this is sort of an interesting and unique idea. So there are um, a few people who have podcasts that are part of this little group. Um, I'm not 100% sure what the name is going to end up being, um, but we have our own little Discord server where we can talk to each other and help each other out and discuss podcasting and tips and tricks and whatever it happens to be, just supporting each other. Um, so I, I, you know, I think as this is just something that has been started to be discussed over the last few days. Um, but you know, there might be like a, a short five second audio tag that I will be starting to throw in my episodes, um, that mentions it, uh, whatever it is, you know, go support these other people who are doing these things probably in their free time and just having a good time doing it. So, um, as I have more information about that, I will let you know like what, what it's called, but I think currently the name is control shift pod if I remember correctly. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking because I got uh, I got other stuff to do. Like go celebrate my dad's birthday. Uh, okay, this has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Hey, we're talking about some words. Let's talk about some more words. Um, let's see. We are at uh, three quarters of the way through page 145. Oh, I am curious. How far are we into the letter B? The letter B, we've only got like a handful of months left. All right. The first word is bottle club. Two words, noun from 1943. A club serving patrons previously purchased or reserved alcoholic drinks after normal legal closing hours. Well, that doesn't seem legal, but maybe it is. No, it's probably not. Um, All right, next we have bottled gas. Two words, noun from 1858. Gas under pressure in portable cylinders. I think I have to turn this down in my headphones because it is too loud. Uh, Okay, next we have bottle feed. Two words with a hyphen. Transitive verb from circa 1865. To feed, as an infant, with a bottle. Next is bottle gourd, G-O-U-R-D. Two words, noun from 1652. A common cultivated gourd having a variably shaped fruit with a hard shell that is sometimes used as a container. Ooh, what do you put in your gourd? If you have gourds that you use as a container, please send me a message and tell me what you put in them. Let's see, the scientific name is Lagenaria, Sinceraria. Sinceraria. Yep, that's what it says. Next is bottle green. Two words, noun from 1795. A dark green. Bottle green. That reminds me of Heineken bottles. Uh, but why? I mean, what? Why did it? Did, was bottle bottle green was probably decided on before Heineken was had green bottles. Were there other bottles that were green? What, what what were these bottles made out of? Why are they green? What happened there? 1795. They were probably making bottles back then. But what were they making them out of? And why were they green? Have I thought about this enough? Probably. Next is bottleneck. One word, first form, adjective from 1896. Synonym is narrow, as in bottleneck harbors. Aren't bottlenecks the worst when you're, like, driving? Mm. All right, now we have the second form of bottleneck. It is a noun from 1907. 1A, a narrow route or route. 1B, a point of traffic congestion. A point of traffic congestion. 2A, someone or something that retards or halts. That's retards as in it's, it slows. That's We don't use that word in that bad way. It's just slowing. Um, or halts free movement and progress. 2B, 
synonym is impasse. I think I first learned the word impasse from the movie The Princess Bride. He said, I, I guess we are at an impasse. 2C, a dramatic reduction in the size of a population as of a species that results in a decrease in genetic variation. 3. A style of guitar playing in which glissando effects are produced by sliding an object as a knife blade or the bottle neck of a bottle along the strings. Uh, so that part was in parentheses, so we could say without the parentheses, uh, a style of guitar playing in which in which glissando effects are produced by sliding an object along the strings. And then, yeah, sometimes they probably use the neck of a bottle just because uh, it was nearby and handy because people sometimes drink when they're playing music. Maybe it's in a bar. There's just a bottle there, and they're playing music for the patrons. So they're like, hey, this is a cool thing I could use. I'll make this happen. Uh, that, by the way, is called also bottleneck guitar. Um, now we have the third form of bottleneck. It is a transitive verb from 1933, to slow or halt by causing a bottleneck. Next is bottle-nosed dolphin. Bottle-nosed is two words with a hyphen. This is a noun from circa 1909, and the synonym is bottle-nosed dolphin with no hyphen and no D at the end of nose. Uh, so it's bottle-nosed, not bottle-nosed. Oh, look, that's the next one. Noun from 1940. A relatively small, stout-bodied, chiefly gray-toothed whale with a prominent beak and falcate dorsal fin. Well, I'll have to look up what falcate means. F-A-L-C-A-T-E. Um, the scientific name is Terciops truncatus. I don't know if I officially realize that dolphins or at least these dolphins were whales i guess i thought that they were a different sort of thing i knew that they were both mammals uh but that is news to me um i uh, many years ago i i was able to swim with dolphins I, you know one of those things at a resort they've got that enclosure and uh you know i got some photos with the dolphins and that was a really really cool experience um you know you you can pet them and they feel very rubbery um well trained obviously but i definitely have some mixed feelings about you know having them in that captivity in the first place and and all that um but you know it it was it was a very cool experience to to do that once but i don't think i would do it again sorry all right next we have bottling with an ing noun from 1954 a beverage and a especially a wine that is bottled at a particular time now we have the word bottom, B-O-T-T-O-M. It is the first form. It is also the last word in this episode. The second and third forms are in the next episode. Noun from ba -ba -ba, before the 12th century. There's a bunch. 1A, the underside of something. That's, that's the bottom. 1B, a surface, as the seat of a chair, designed to support something. Uh, no, sorry, something resting on it. Uh, the, the word something goes over the line in both 1A and 1B. So I just went to the other thing. Um, okay, and that one, 1B is used figuratively in phrases like the bottom dropped out to describe a sudden collapse or downturn, as in lost millions when the bottom dropped out of the stock market. 1C the posterior end of the trunk. Synonyms are buttocks and rump. I feel like you have to say those words almost with a British accent. Buttocks and rump. Number two, the surface on which a body of water lies. 3A, the part of a ship's hull lying below the water. Two, oh no, 3B, synonyms are boat and ship. What they call the whole boat or the whole ship, the bottom? That seems odd. 4A, the lowest part or place, as in the bottom of the page. We are getting close to the bottom of the page, not there yet, but at the end of the next episode, we will be at the bottom of the page. Uh, let's see, 4B, the remotest or inmost point. Uh, 4C, the lowest or last place in point of precedence, as in starting work at the bottom, or started work at the bottom. 4D, 
the part of a garment worn on the lower part of the body, especially the pants of pajamas. And that is usually used in plural. The bottoms. You know, I'm actually wearing pajama bottoms right now, like I do pretty much all day, every day, these days in quarantine. Uh, when you are listening to this, it's uh, September or later of 2020. I am still recording this in August, uh, but I'm pretty sure I will still be working at home um, when this episode airs. 4. E. The last half of an inning of baseball. 4. F. The bass or baritone instruments of a band. Number 5. Synonym is bottom land. One word. Um, is that in the dictionary? Let's see. Yes, that is in the next episode. Um, that one, bottom land, is usually used in plural. Number six, synonyms are basis and source, as in trying to get to the bottom of the rumors. Seven, capacity, as of a horse, to endure strain. Mm. Eight, a foundation color applied to textile fibers before dyeing. And number nine, it's a long one-ish, a fundamental quark that accounts for the existence and lifetime of epsilon particles and has an electric charge of one-third and a measured energy of approximately 5 GeV. The G and the V are capitalized in that. Also, the flavor characterizing this particle. Oh, I didn't know character... Uh, particles had flavors is it banana or vanilla or chocolate or strawberry i could go on for a while but i'm not going to bottomed is an adjective and at bottom the synonyms for that are really and basically um but but, but we can skip the etymology did i skip any other etymology i don't think so i think we are good all right so we had bottle club bottle gas bottle feed bottle gourd bottle green bottleneck uh, bottle nosed or bottle nose dolphin bottling and bottom. I am going to pick bottle green as the word of the episode because I like green, especially dark green. So let's see what bottle green looks like. That's all I got today. Thank you for listening. And, uh, you know, go be good to other people, please. And thank you. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Today's my birthday, yeah. You know how old I am? You'll have to guess. You can send me a message uh, in whatever form you want. All that information is in the episode description. Um, Although if I said my age in the last year's episode, you could probably just do some math and figure it out. I don't remember if I said it. But anyway, uh, yeah, today's my birthday, yay. I'm going to be celebrating like 14 more of these throughout this podcast, so I'm going to be very old by the time this is done. Um, th- it's a coincidence that this uh, I'm my birthday's landing on this episode. I don't think there's anything special related to me in this episode at all, so, uh, you know, it's just the way the, the words land. Um, it's the end of page 145. Yay. Happy, happy birthday to me. Um, uh, you know what you, your, your present to me could be is a lovely review and a share. That would be great. You know what I'm talking about. All right, let's talk about the words. The first word is bottom, second form, verb from 1520. Looks like it's transitive. Number one, to furnish with a bottom. Two, to provide a foundation for. Three, to bring to the bottom. Four, to get to the bottom of. Oh, and look, here are some intransitive definitions. My bad. Number one, to become based. Two, to reach the bottom. Three, to reach a point where a decline is halted or reversed. And that is usually used with the word out, as in the team bottomed out in last place. That's where I would be. Bottomer is a noun. Third form of bottom, adjective from 1561, one, of relating to or situated at the bottom, as in bottom rock. That should be the the name of a rock genre style, bottom rock. Is that when you play the instruments with your butt? Number two, frequenting the bottom, as in bottom fish. Next, we have bottom feeder, 
Two words with a hyphen. Noun from 1885. One, a fish that feeds at the bottom. Two, one that is of the lowest status or rank. Three, an opportunist who seeks quick profit, usually at the expense of others or from their misfortune. Bottom feeding is an adjective. Next is bottom fishing. Two words with a hyphen, noun from 1975. The practice of making purchases, as of stocks, when prices appear to be at their lowest point. Well, you never know with stocks. Bottom fisher is a noun. Next is bottom land. This one was mentioned in the last episode. Noun from 1728. Low line land among, along, where'd I get among from? Along a water course, often used in plural, as in the fertile bottomlands. Next is bottomless, adjective from the 14th century. One, having no bottom, as in a bottomless chair. Well, that is a very useless chair. 2A, extremely deep. 2B, impossible to comprehend. Synonym is unfathomable, as in a bottomless mystery. 2C, synonyms are boundless and unlimited. 3A, and this says it's from the absence of lower as well as upper garments. So we are talking about garments. Oh, and the synonym is just nude, as in bottom dancers. Yes, it's from, I probably should have read the etymology after. It's from the absence of lower as well as upper garments. I feel like there was a better way to say that, but maybe not. 3B, featuring nude entertainers. Bottomlessly is an adverb, and bottomlessness is a noun. Next is bottom line. Two words with a hyphen. Adjective from 1972. One, concerned only with cost or profits. Number two, synonyms are pragmatic and realistic. Bottom liner is a noun. Bottom line is next. Noun from 1967. 1A, the essential or salient point. Synonym is crux. C-R-U-X. 1B, the primary or most important consideration. 2A, the line at the bottom of a financial report that shows the net profit or loss. 2B, financial considerations as cost or profit or loss. 2C, the final result. Next is bottom most. One word, adjective from 1855. 1A, Situated at the very bottom. Synonyms are lowest and deepest. Now we have 1B. Synonym is last. As in, the bottommost part of the day. What is that part? Uh, that is a quote from Alfred Kazin or Kazan something. K-A-Z-I-N. The bottommost, the bottommost part of the day. Well, is it midnight? or noon, or something in between. Um, now we have number two, most basic, as in the bottom most problems facing the world. We have a lot of those. Next is bottom round, two words, noun from 1923, meat as steak from the outer part of a round of beef. Next is bottoms up, or no, just bottom up, there's no S, Two words with a hyphen, adjective from 1976, progressing upward from the lowest levels as of a stratified organization or system, as in bottom-up management. Next we have botulin, B-O-T-U-L-I-N. It is a noun from circa 1900, and we have the synonym botulinum toxin, which is coming up. But first, we just have botulinum, or could also be botulinus. It is a noun from 1902, a spore-forming bacterium that secretes botulinum toxin. Botulinal is an adjective, and it says this is from the Latin botulus, B-O-T-U-L-U-S, which means sausage, of all things. Uh, I feel like I have to look into more about why. The scientific name uh, of this spore-forming bacterium is Clostridium botulinum, or botulinum. 
And here's botulinum toxin, noun from 1928, a neurotoxin formed by botulinum that causes botulism and that is injected in a purified form for therapeutic and cosmetic purposes as to treat blepharospasm. Oh, we had that word. You can go back a ways and hear me talk about that one. Uh, To treat blepharospasm and reduce wrinkles. Uh, yeah, blepharo, blepharo spasms, I think, are the things where you get like a little twitch. Sometimes that happens in your uh, eyelids. That happens. Um, so they use botulinum toxin to f- work with that. Here we go with botulism, noun from 1887. Um, an acute paralytic disease caused by botulinum toxin, especially in food. Now, just because they say that sometimes they use this in a therapeutic way does not mean that you should go, you know, ingesting this stuff. It's probably a very bad idea to do that. You should uh, uh, let a a doctor take care of it. Okay, that is my PSA for the day. Next is boo-boo. I think it's boo-boo. B-O-U-B-O-U. Noun from 1961. A long flowing garment worn in parts of Africa. This is from a Malinke word. I think that's how it's pronounced. Maybe. Uh, And their word is boo-boo without the O's. So it's B-U-B-U. And then our last word for this episode is boucher. And let me make sure it doesn't go on to the next page. No, it does not. This one is spelled B-O-U-C-H-E-E with an accent over the first E. This is a noun from 1846, a small patty shell usually containing a creamed filling. Sounds great. This is a French word, boucher, literally means mouthful. So if you put the whole thing in your mouth, you will have a mouthful of it. Or maybe if the patty shell is the mouth uh, and it's got creamed filling, then the shell has a mouthful of creamed filling. Maybe. Um, This is from Latin buca which means cheek or mouth. So we had bottom, bottom feeder, bottom fishing, bottom land, bottom list, bottom line, bottom line, uh, bottom most, bottom round, bottom up, botulin, botulinum, botulinum toxin, botulism, boo-boo, and boucher. Oh, what do I want to pick? Well, just because it's funny, I'm going to pick bottomless as the word of the episode. So thank you very much for listening. Uh... Feel free to wish me a happy birthday or another birthday present you can give me is just to go help somebody out. Go be nice. Go make a donation somewhere to some place that needs it because that that's what we need all the time, but especially now. Uh, there are plenty of places, you know, Black Lives Matter, the ACLU, just to name two off the top of my head. All right, I am done. Thank you for listening. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Uh, There are some interesting words in this section. I think it's a lot of French stuff. So we are at the top of page 146. The first word is boucle. I'm going to have to do a lot of spellings and extra pronunciations and screwing things up probably. This is spelled B-O-U-C-L-E with or without an accent on the E. It is a noun from 1886. One, an uneven yarn of three plies, one of which forms loops at intervals. Two, a fabric of boucle yarn. This is French. Like I said, boucle means curly from the verb boucler, which means to curl, from bocle, which means buckle or curl. Now we have boudin. B-O-U-D-I-N, noun from 1845. One, synonym is blood sausage. Two, a spicy Cajun sausage containing rice and meat as pork or seafood. I think meat, seafood is meat. Uh, I guess some people don't always think that, but seafood is meat, so it could say as pork or seafood. Um, And then this is just a, a French word that means sausage. Next, we have boudoir. 
B-O-U-D-O-I-R, noun from 1781. Let's see how many words of these will be French. We are three for three. Uh, This is a woman's dressing room, bedroom, or private sitting room. Oh, interesting. The etymology says, uh, like I said, it is French, from the word boudere, which means to pout. P-O-U-T. Like, so, such an old word, um, an old way to use this, but like, when a woman needs to go pout, she's going to go to her dressing room or bedroom or private sitting room. I mean, I feel like that's probably what the mindset was, but that's, it's just so antiquated. Um, all right, now we have bouffant, B-O-U-F-F-A-N-T. This is an adjective from 1832. Yes, it is French, and it means puffed out, as in bouffant hairdos, also as in a bouffant veil. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this before, but I have... No, I know I've mentioned this before, uh, but I have an animation called Bulbous Bouffant that I did not write, but I did the animation for, uh, and so how could I not mention this when we are at the word bouffant? Uh, I'll put a link in the episode show notes so you can go watch it. Uh, let's see. This is French from the verb bouffer, which means to puff. Now we have a fun one, bougainvillea, bougainvillea, or bougainvillea, or bougainvillea, bougainvillea, b-o-u-g-a-i-n-v-i-l-l-e-a. Uh, you could also do the, the spell the last part L-A-E-A. This is a noun from 1849. Any of a genus of the four o'clock family of ornamental tropical American woody vines and shrubs with brilliant purple or red floral bracts. The four o'clock family? Okay. The genus name is Bourgainvillea. Well, it's the same word. And this is not French. Um, This is from Louis Antoine de Bougainville. That was his whole name. That's a fancy name. All right, so we're one word is not French. So far, the rest of them are, though. All right, next is bow, B-O-U-G-H. It is a noun from before the 12th century, a branch of a tree. Uh, oh, what is, what's in that poem, uh, When the Bow Breaks? That's like that nurse, not nursery rhyme, but it's, you know, that thing. Um, it is a, a branch of a tree, especially a main branch, and bowed is an adjective. Uh, This is Middle English. It means shoulder or bow from Old English bog, which is akin to the Old High German bog, which means shoulder from the Greek pekis, which means forearm. Not sure how that one got in there. Next is bought. Like, I bought some food. It is the first form. Um, It is the past past participle of the word buy. B-U-Y. Second form of bought is is an adjective from 1599, and we have the number two definition for the word store, as in bought clothes. Next is boughten. Doesn't seem like this is a proper word, but it is an adjective from 1738. It is a chiefly dialect, um, and then the synonym is bought, so bought or boughten, as in the only boughten carpet in the region. And that is a quote from H.W. Thompson. Seems incorrect to me, but I guess some people say it. Next is bougie. B-O-U-G-I-E. Noun from 1755. One, a wax candle. Two, a, a tapering cylindrical instrument for introduction into a tubular passage of the body. And then two, B, synonym is suppository. It's a bougie? Okay. Uh, This is, it's a French word from bougie, which is a seaport in Algeria. Next we have bouillabaisse or bouillabaisse or, yeah, I think that's good. I always thought you pronounce the L's in this one, but I guess you don't. B-O-U-I-L-L-A-B-A-I-S-S-E for those of you who want to know how it is spelled. It is a noun from 1855. One, a highly seasoned fish stew made with at least two kinds of fish. 
And then number two, we have the number two definition for the word potpourri. Next, we have bouillon. Uh, bouillon, bouillon, bouillon. You could say bouillon. B-O-U-I-L-L-O-N. This one you do or can say the L. It is a noun from circa 1656. A clear seasoned soup made usually from lean beef. And then just broadly, the synonym broth. This is a French word from uh, from the word bouillir, which means to boil. Now we have bouillon cube, noun from circa 1922. A cube of evaporated meat extract. Next is boulder. You could also spell it, um, you know, the normal way is B-O-U. You could also spell it with a B-O-W. This is a noun from 1617. A detached and rounded or much worn mass of rock. Bouldered is an adjective and bouldery is an adjective. That looks very bouldery to me. It looks like a detached and rounded or much worn mass of rock. Uh, why does it have to be rounded or much worn? I mean, can it just be, I don't know. There must be some reason. This is short for boulder stone, which is from Middle English, boulder stone, spelled differently, uh, which is part of a translation of a word of Scandinavian origin akin to the Swedish dialect word uh, bullersten, which means large stone in a stream. That's very specific. From buller, which means noise, plus sten, which means stone. Uh, so it's a stone in the stream, and the stream is probably making noise. So that's how they got buller sten, and then we went, you know, to boulder stone, and then just went to boulder. Next is bouldering, noun from 1920. The sport of rock climbing on large boulders or low cliffs. Boulder is an intransitive verb, and boulderer is a noun. Next, we have bully, boule, both of those are good. It is spelled B-O-U-L-E, first form, noun from 1840. A legislative council of ancient Greece, consisting first of an aristocratic advisory body and later of a representative senate. This is a Greek word, boule, Literally means will, W-I-L-L, from bulistai, which means to wish. And now we have the second form, but it is pronounced a little bit differently. It looks like it's just bul, one syllable instead of the two syllables for the last one. This is a noun from 1918. A synthetically formed mass, as of sapphire, with the atomic structure of a single crystal. I don't know what that means. This is a French word, which means ball, and there's more at the word bowl, like you put your cereal cereal in a bowl. Next, we have boulevard. Boulevard, noun, there's a couple different pronunciations, noun from 1768, a broad, often landscaped thoroughfare. This is, again, a French word, modified of Middle Dutch, is that what the D-M-D, Middle Dutch? And uh, which the Middle Dutch word is bul- bulwark, which means bulwark. Okay, don't know what that is. We'll get there later. Um, and now we have boulevardier or boulevardier. This is a noun from 1871, a frequenter of the Parisian boulevards. Broadly, the synonym man about town. You, uh, you, if you, you just walk, you. Uh, nonchalantly, casually walk down, up and down the Parisian boulevards, and you are a boulevardier. All right, our last word is bouleversement, bouleversement, something like that, Uh, B-O-U-L-E-V-E-R-S-E-M-E-N-T, bouleversement. Funny enough, it's a French word, noun from 1782, number one, Synonym is reversal. And number two, a violent disturbance. Synonym is disorder. So we had, oh boy, I'm not even going to say the words, uh, but let's see. One, I'm going to count how many were French. One, 
two, uh, three, four, not this one, four, uh, da, 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 da. this is fun, right? Everybody's having a good time. Uh, ba, 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 five, six, seven, I think that would be eight, uh, no, not that one, nine, what's, that one is Greek, so yeah, nine, uh, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve of them, out of one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seven, eight, yep, yeah, definitely the majority, don't know why I did that, I'm sure that was riveting for everybody here, um, so what am I gonna pick, um, I'm gonna pick, uh, I'm gonna pick, uh, I'm gonna pick bouffant, as the word of the episode, because I have a personal connection to that word. That is it. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. I hope you are enjoying this as much as I am. Uh, let's see. The, the first word um, probably could have put it in the last episode just because it fit little, a little bit better because it's a French word, uh, but that's okay. It is boule or buell, B-O-U-L-L-E, or just B-U-H-L. It is a noun from 1823. Inlaid decoration of tortoise shell, yellow metal, and white metal in cabinet work. Sounds cool. Let's find a picture to post on Instagram. Uh, This is from André Charles Boule who died in 1732 and was a French cabinet maker, so he was probably the first one to do something cool like this. Next, we have the word bounce. First form, verb, from uh, the 13th century. We are starting with transitive. One is obsolete. Synonyms are beat and bump. Number two, to cause to rebound or be reflected, as in bounce a ball, also as in Bounce a light ray off a reflector. 3A. Synonyms are dismiss and fire. You've been bounced. 3B. To expel precipitately precipitately from a place. 3C. To eliminate from a competition by defeating, as in was bounced from the tournament in the first round. 4. To issue a check. Drawn on an account with insufficient funds. Oh, it's terrible when you bounce a check. Five. You young kids today, you probably don't know what that's you've been talking about. Five. To present, as an idea, to another person to elicit comments or to gain approval. Usually used with the word off. Like, hey, you know, I'm just going to bounce off some ideas from you. Uh, you know, tell me what you think. Moving on to intransitive. Number one. To rebound or reflect after striking a surface as the ground. 2. To recover from a blow or a defeat quickly, usually used with the word back. Number 3. To be returned by a bank because of insufficient funds in a checking account, as in his checks bounced. 4a. To leap suddenly, synonym is bound. Uh, Now we are on 4b. To walk with springing steps. 5. To hit a baseball so that it hits the ground before it reaches an infielder. Now we have the second form of bounce. It is a noun from 1523. And I'm getting that thing again where when I look down, because I'm getting near the bottom of the page, I want to yawn. That's weird, so I had to lift this book up. 1A. A sudden leap or bound. 1B. Synonym is rebound. Number two, synonym is bluster. And number three, synonyms are verve and liveliness. Next is bouncer, noun from 1865. One that bounces as A, one employed to restrain or eject disorderly persons. B, a bouncing ground ball. Next we have bouncing. Adjective from circa 1563. One, synonyms are lively and animated. Two, enjoying good health. Synonym is robust. Bouncingly is an adverb. Now we have bouncing bet. This is um, a noun from circa 1818. 
what does it say? Often capitalized 2D B. Uh, but there is no 2D. I don't understand what that means. That's okay. Oh, the second B. Bounce the B in bet is often capitalized. Okay. Uh, so this is a European perennial herb of the pink family that is widely naturalized in the U.S. and has pink or white flowers and leaves which yield a detergent when bruised. Hmm. Uh, called also soap wart. That's one word. Soap wart. The scientific name is Saponaria officinalis or officinalis. This is from Bet, which is a nickname for Elizabeth. Why didn't they call it Beth? Bouncing Beth. I guess Bet at the time in 1818 was a nickname for Be Elizabeth. Okay, next is bouncy adjective from 1921. I was driving down the street just a few days ago. And uh, I ran in, oh, almost ran into a uh, bouncy castle. I didn't almost run into it. I turned the corner and I saw that the street I wanted to go down had a bouncy castle way down there at the end. So I had to drive down an alley and drive around it. It was very inconvenient for me. Um, okay, bouncy. One, synonyms are buoyant and exuberant. Number two, synonym is resilient. Three, Marked by or producing bounces. Bouncily is an adverb. That castle is so good at producing bounces for the kids. Now we have the word bound. B-O-U-N-D. It is the last word. We are doing six forms in this episode. And then we're going to leave the last seventh form for the next episode. Because, you know... It, it's been bad, so we have to separate it from everybody else. It's been causing a disturbance. All right, this one, first form, adjective from the 13th century. Number one is archaic, and the synonym is ready. Number two, intending to go. Synonym is going, as in bound for home. Also as in college bound. This is uh, from Middle English, bound with no D. From Old Norse, buin, which is from the word bua, which means to dwell uh, or prepare, akin to the Old High German buan, which means to dwell, and there's more at the word bower or bower. Now we have the second form of bound. It is a noun from the 13th century. 1a, a limiting line. Synonym is boundary, usually used in plural. Uh, 1B, something that limits or restrains, as in beyond the bounds of decency. 2 is usually plural. So first we have 2A, synonym is borderland. And 2B, the land within certain bounds. 3, a number greater than or equal to every number in a set as the range of a function. Also, a number less than or equal to every number in a set. Now we have the third form of bound. It is the past and past participle of the word bind. Fourth form of bound. Verb, it's a transitive verb from the 14th century. One, to set limits or bounds to. Synonym is confine. Two, to form the boundary of. Synonym is enclose. And three, to name the boundaries of. Now we have the fifth form of bound. I'm getting sleepy. All right, this is an adjective from the 14th century. One, placed under legal or moral restraint or obligation. Synonym is obliged, as in duty bound. 2A, that, that would be duty, D-U-T-Y. I hope you all understood that. Uh, now we have 2A, fastened by or as if by a band. Synonym is confined, as in desk-bound. To be, very likely. Synonym is sure, as in bound to rain soon. It is bound to rain soon. Three, uh, made costive or coastive. Synonym is constipated. I'm not sure if I'm familiar with the word costive or coastive. Uh, number four is talking about a book. Secured to the covers by cords, tapes, or glue. 
but you gotta uh, those books gotta be bound. You gotta bound the book. Uh, number five, synonyms are determined and resolved. Number six, held in chemical or physical combination. And seven, always occurring in combination with another linguistic form, as in, oh, what is this saying? As in, un, the prefix un in unknown, and the suffix er in speaker are bound forms. That was the example. Un in unknown and er in speaker are bound forms. Okay. And then at the end, it says compare to the 11D definition for the word free. And then finally, we have the sixth form of bound. It is a noun from circa 1553. Number one, synonyms are leap and jump. And number two, the action of rebounding. Synonym is bounce. Um, the etymology says it is Middle French bond from bondir, which means to leap, from bombatire, which means to hum, from the Latin bombus, which is a deep, hollow sound. And there's more at the word bomb. So we had bull, bounce, bouncer, bouncing, bouncing bet, bouncy, and bound. Well, I am going to pick bouncy as the word of the episode. Uh, well, that's it. That's all I got to say. I'm going to bounce. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye.